So I'm making this informational video for those of you that don't know anything about um, threading bolts um, with a die. So this is my tile saw and what happened a few weeks back is um, the locking nut. My blade goes right on here on the spindle and the locking nut that goes on there wouldn't come off. As much as I turned it, it would not come off. There happened to be a plumber with um, a wrench that I've never seen before. It's not just a normal monkey wrench, but um, anyway, the point is he was able to grip that nut and slowly but surely get the nut off. And then this is what it looked like afterward. Actually, he didn't get the nut off all the way. What had happened is he got it almost to the end and it would not come off. So finally, I got a guy that had a, um, a pneumatic cutter and was able to kind of sideways cut the nut and then we just took it off. And this is the end result. I have, I have a useless tile saw that I really, really like and I want to be able to use again. So I have a backup that I've used, but I don't like my backup. So I want to get this fixed and it's taken a while for me to figure out how to do it because I've never done anything like this before. And if you're watching this, chances are you haven't either. And um, any type of mistakes that I made or anything at all will be recorded because, again, this is my first time. I'm a tile guy. I'm not an engineer, and I don't know how to engineer threads on here other than what I see online. So what I have is what's called a die. And this is a handle for the die that's in. So what I originally ended up with is a 5 8 uh, my, my nut that went on there, I found out is 5 8 nut, which means these threads are 5 8 The next step down from there is 9 16 which I should have gone with half an inch. Um, 9 16 is the lowest, lower one down from that. And so I got a die for that. And so basically what you're looking at is a very, very hard piece of steel that has the thread cutters inside of there. They're very sharp. Um, on the back side of it, you'll know the back from the front because on the back side of it, the threads start right away. You can clearly see where the threads start right away. On the front side of it is a little taper right there. The threads don't start right away. It gives you about a quarter of an inch taper to start onto. So, in other words, once you get it on onto this area, um, with, of course with the handle on it, where is it at? get it onto this area with the handle on it, then you're able to start your um, your uh, cutting of this particular um, bolt, bolt, spindle, whatever it is, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, so that's what that is. And then of course you need a handle that matches up the hexagon on the inside of that. It drops right in perfectly, and then you turn it tight. On the other side of this is apparently some type of adjustable, I think what it is, is when you when you start turning it, it'll either stop there, or if you open it up, it'll allow you to go further. So that's what that is, and I don't know why I ended up with an adjustable, because I ended up at getting it at Napa, and that's what they sold me. So I know another thing about cutting metal, you have to use some type of oil, in this case I have WD-40, and so I will be oiling this up as well. Um, plus I'm gonna scrub off the little excess rust kind of interesting to be able to um, have something that never had threads on it and put threads on it. Uh, it's interesting to me anyway because it's not something I do. So if there are machinists out there or DIY guys that work on tools and equipment, you probably think this is pretty elementary. And I'm most likely making some mistakes here along the way. But this is not my expertise. So I'm just practicing with it. Apparently, also, when I try to uh, dry run that die on here, I feel that uh, the edge here is stopping me. And so I've also seen on some other videos where you can take a little grinder, grinding wheel if you will, kind of grind off the edge there so that that die will actually set down on there and you can start turning it. Another thing I'm going to have to do is lock this mechanism belt driven motor and I'm gonna have to figure out a way to stop that from turning in order for this to be successful. I actually tried going to a tool and die place, have them do it because you know they're the ones that do it all the time. 
and nobody wanted my business because all those shops are set up for um, manufacturing specialized equipment, etc. So, although they could do it, you know, they'd have to charge me an arm and a leg. I mean, you know, when I say an arm and a leg, I mean hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Whereas this set up here cost me about 30. So it was about nine or ten dollars for the die, and then for the handle, it was about 22. So um, 30 dollars is a lot better than hundreds of dollars. Anyway, I'm gonna come off of camera and see if I can get this end of it tapered down a little bit so that the die will fit on there correctly. Okay, so far I've only done two things. I've managed to to get the end of this spindle here. Um, you know the taller edge that it had on it sanded that while well, it sanded it down I grinded it down a little bit I have electric grinder so I just took the wheel made little taps on it until until the thing is relatively smooth and it's a little smaller so my die wherever it's at oh it's right here my die again with the tapered edge that's not it this is a tapered edge it kind of fits right there and it kind of sets on it. And so once I put some pressure with the handle and get some oil on it, then it should start threading all the way back to almost the end. I guess where this discrepancy is, I don't know if you can see in the light, where this discrepancy is, about a quarter of an inch, that's where the washer goes on. I have a large washer that goes against the blade. So the blade and the washer would take up that space and then Theoretically, the new nut, which will be a half-inch nut, will slide right on there. Although the half-inch is a little loose, so I'm a little concerned about that. But I can always take it down from 9 16 to half an inch if I need to later on. So, other thing I did is I got some vice grips, and I managed to go on this spindle right here that's part of this motor. And this is the direction I'm going to be turning, and so it's going to stop right there and give me some leverage to so when I start turning this I won't turn the whole motor. That's all I've done. Okay, I'm a little further into this. What I ended up having to do, I guess because um, this spindle is so large, I had to grind it down some more. So that little bite that I thought I was going to get didn't work. I ground it down quite a bit actually. Sprayed some more WD-40 on it and now it looks like I've got at least maybe one thread already done. But now I'm having an issue with the spindle is actually slipping, so now I have to rig something up to stop it from slipping, which probably, if you're trying to do this on something that's free and open, won't be an issue. For me, I can't do it because I have closed bearings that are inside of there, so I can't take the spindle out and do it on a bench. I'm kind of stuck doing it here. So I'm going to keep on working on it, trying to figure out how to make this stable so I can get my, uh, my threads on this thing. So it appears, you can't see in here, but it appears I have about three or four threads already cut. I managed to get a pipe wrench on the other side to hold it. One thing I forgot to tell you, when you're doing this, you go about as much as you can until it kind of gets really tight and then you back off. Then you go again and back off. That's going to help you get this off of here finally, plus it's going to cut the thread a lot better. So I usually, what I'm doing now is I'm turning it about half a turn, backing off about a quarter back and forth so that um, I get a nice clean thread going all the way through so I'll be excited to find out if I did it right. And now's the time to take it off. Voila! I have threads. Where I had none before, I now have threads. Now the real test is can I get the nut and the washer on here to get my blade back on because that was the whole purpose. Isn't that cool though? I have threads where there were no threads before. That's just so cool. Okay, the finished product is this. Um, I have a couple more adjustments I have to do with this saw blade guard. But basically what you're seeing here, I had to go to Home Depot and literally bring the saw in for um, a proper fit. It's supposed to be 9 16 They don't make a 9 16 nut. Um, so it would have been better had I done a half inch. A half inches would have um, fit better, and it would have been close enough to the three quarter or to the uh, five eighths that I had to begin with that I could have 
done the same thing with my grinder and just grinded it down to a certain point. Anyway, I was able to find um, a metric nut. I don't know what size it is. It doesn't really matter, but it fit. And it fit probably about three quarters of the way. It threaded on really, really good. About three quarters of the way it started to get caught up, so I got a couple of spacers. My natural spacer for my blade is already intact, and that keeps it from wobbling and all, you know, everything. So it doesn't really matter in the long run as long as everything pushed up there is really tight, which it is. So I got a couple of washers in there for spacers, and then um, I got a really, really good um, bite on that nut so that, you know, it's not going to go anywhere. So I'm very, very happy about that because. Honestly, the only alternative would be go to a machine shop and try and get that spindle out of there, but then again, it has that locking bearing um, that I was showing you earlier, and um, that would have been expensive. And this tile saw is very expensive. It cost me about $1,200 for a brand new one. I didn't want to buy a brand new one, so what I came up with was $30 for the die set, and then another $2 for the nut and the washers. So I get about $32, $35 into it total, and I am back in business. I have to get another nut for this back guard over here. I don't know what I did with it. Took it apart to uh, start this project. I must have lost it. But... Yeah. Perfect. Love it, love it, love it. It's one of those little little things in life that really, really make you happy because I've been without this thing for the last few jobs and this is my favorite, so I'm glad to have it back and um, hope you learned something from it. If you didn't, I guess you're really, really bored to hear me talk again. <laughs>